Le Mans is a moderately sized town to the west of Paris, known for its centrally long history of thrilling endurance racing events. One of the most iconic moments from the near past occurred in the mid-2000s when a silent diesel race car crossed the finish line first, leaving spectators awestruck. This marked the onset of the diesel era at the Le Mans with Audi and also less successful and more powerful Peugeot emerging as a key player. Peugeot's last Le Mans attempt took the form of the Peugeot 905, a brief yet impactful race prototype that participated in the 24 hours of Le Mans during the 1990s. Powered by a magnificent Group C 3.5-litre engine resonating through its 10 cylinders at an impressive 12,000 revolutions per minute, the Peugeot 905 clinched the first place in the 1992 and 1993 seasons. The team also secured second and two third places during these seasons, fielding three cars simultaneously. During the late 1990s to the early 2000s, Porsche and Audi dominated the racing scene and later diesel technology began to assert its presence. In 2005, Peugeot joined the diesel revolution, conceptualizing a powerful machine. Audi, being a year ahead, executed the idea and triumphed the 2006 race with the groundbreaking R10 TDI featuring an unprecedented 12-cylinder racing diesel engine. For the French, the venture into diesel technology proved both a blessing and a challenge. On one hand, it showcased the competitiveness of alternative engines. On the other, it introduced a tough rival, with a team consisting of big names. Peugeot made the bold decision to handle the chassis and engine development in-house. This undertaking introduced significant challenges, given the estimated rating at over 600 horsepower and torque figure surpassing 1000 Nm comparable to that of a medium-duty truck. As a turbo diesel running high boost to achieve such power, the power plant needed to be robust yet lightweight to maintain the car's performance. The R10 TDI operated with a boost pressure of 3 bar, though it produced slightly less power. Peugeot maximized the rules, allowing for up to 5.5 liters of engine displacement, employing a custom-made 12-cylinder configuration with a 100-degree bang angle to lower the center of gravity, featuring double overhead cams and four valves per cylinder. The engine utilized two large gear turbochargers with twin intercoolers and twin diesel particulate filters from Down Automotive. Bosch supplied a common rail direct injection system and in compliance with regulations, two 39.9mm engine air intake restrictors were incorporated. Diesel cars were permitted smaller 81 litre fuel tanks. Through meticulous engineering and extensive testing of single cylinder prototypes, the French team achieved an impressive output of 730 horsepower and 1200 Nm of torque at just 3000 rpm, almost 800 horsepower more than the Audi R10 TDI. The engine's optimal performance range between 3000 to 5000 rpm, a departure from the decade-old F1 shared 3.5 litre revolutionized the perception of speed, despite achieving significantly higher speed. The substantial torque output necessitated a robust transmission. Ricardo was entrusted with this task, resulting in the development of a special electropneumatic six-speed sequential housed in aluminum, serving as a stress member. Transferring such torque at the engine speeds required the development of a ceramic multiplate clutch. The gearbox, integral to the rear suspension, 
featured the clutch at its very end for easy serviceability. The newly developed Peugeot 908 HDI, weighing 925 kilos, initially exhibited promising speed, securing the pole position during the 2007 season qualifications. Throughout the race, the 908 HDI led for a significant portion, but the Audi, though underpowered, proved consistent in cornering. Unfortunately, the car number 7 experienced an ultimate end due to an engine breakdown, while the number 8 finished 10 laps behind Audi, totaling 359 laps. The 2008 season witnessed another intense competition between Peugeot and Audi, with the Peugeot 908 proving second faster per lap. However, prolonged pit stops and changing weather conditions favored the R10, resulting in an overall victory while Peugeot struggled in the rain. Despite this setback, Peugeot triumphed at the 1000 km of Nürburgring both years, hinting at its future success. The 908 faced challenges with the engine reliability and struggled in rainy conditions during its first season. The breakthrough came in 2009, with four 908s entering Le Mans, three from Peugeot and one from Pescarello. Pescarello's entry crashed at night, but Peugeot secured first and second places, marking its first Le Mans victory in 16 years since the 905. The French team also showcased their prowess at the 12th hours of Sebring, finishing mere 22 seconds behind the Audi R15 and outperforming the Germans at the 2009 Petit Le Mans. In 2010, the Peugeot 908s continued to excel, claiming victories at Serbring, Silverstone and Spa. However, the 24-hour Le Mans race proved challenging as none of the four cars finished, with three not finishing due to Conrad failures. Despite their speed, the persistent engine issues hindered Peugeot's success, highlighting the importance of reliability in endurance racing. Audi abandoned the V12 in 2008, but Peugeot stuck with the first Gen 908 until 2011 with the Oreca team. The official Peugeot team introduced a new car with a 3.7 litre V8 HDI engine, achieving immediate success. This model was more agile and sophisticated although it moved away from the V12. The V12 Peugeot once appeared at an auction, fetching an estimated 1.6 million euros for enthusiasts seeking an interesting piece of racing history.